Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In this video, we're going to be discussing Severus Snape's iconic death, Lily Evans, Harry Potter, and the famous lines that Snape delivered on his deathbed. It's a line that's up there with always and you're a wizard Harry, and it helps us to peel back the many layers of Snape's character. At the beginning of the books and films, Snape is portrayed as a bully, an outlier, a recluse. However, this general perception of Snape only worsens over time, as he is later perceived to be evil, a cold-blooded, manipulative man who follows the Dark Lord himself. There are certainly glimpses of a less severe Snape that shine through, but ultimately, he is portrayed as a dark and brooding individual. In the Order of the Phoenix, Harry gets a glimpse into Snape's mind during his legitimacy lesson, revealing the side of Snape that Harry was not previously familiar with. In that one moment, despite only seeing a glimpse of what lay in Snape's mind, Harry learned more about him than he had ever known. In spite of a total lack of context, it gave him some small semblance of an idea as to why Snape was the way that he was, the subject of incessant bullying at the hands of Harry's own father. But while this portion of the books and films made us feel something for Snape, this sympathy is short-lived, as in the very next book, film, Snape is revealed to be a Death Eater once again. It's not until much later on, in the Deathly Hallows, that Snape finally gets some proper redemption, at least in the eyes of Harry. Watching on, Harry witnesses firsthand Snape's fatal attack from Nagini. When the coast is clear and Voldemort and Nagini are gone, Harry approaches the dying professor, backed up against the wall, slowly bleeding out. Snape was in a state unlike anything that Harry had ever seen before. The strong, enigmatic Snape was suddenly so helpless, and it's at this point that the idea is planted in Harry's mind that perhaps Snape isn't quite as bad as he thought. He didn't know why, but he knew that he had to approach Snape. In perhaps his bravest moment ever, Snape died looking into the eyes of a boy that was more significant to him than Harry ever knew. This was the boy that shared the same face of the man that bullied him for his entire childhood, and the eyes of the only woman that he ever loved. The same woman that spared her own life to save this boy. With his final breaths in the film version, Snape looked straight into Harry's face and uttered the iconic line, You have your mother's eyes. These were the same eyes that caused Snape more pain than anything else in his entire life. But at the same time, they were the eyes that enabled Snape to feel love, to feel alive. In the book, he simply says to Harry, look at me. And in the following chapter, after reviewing Snape's memories, Harry begins to understand the significance of that line. He did not know why he was doing it, why he was approaching the dying man. He did not know what he felt as he saw Snape's white face and the fingers trying to staunch the blood wound at his neck. Harry took off the invisibility cloak looked down upon the man he hated, whose widening black eyes found Harry as he tried to speak. Harry bent over him, and Snape seized the front of his robes and pulled him close. A terrible rasping, gurgling noise issued from Snape's throat. Take it. Take it. Something more than blood was leaking from Snape, silvery blue, neither gas nor liquid. It gushed from his mouth and his ears and his eyes, and Harry knew what it was, but did not know what to do. A flask, conjured from thin air, was thrust into his shaking hands by Hermione. Harry lifted the silvery substance into it with his wand. When the flask was full to the brim, and Snape looked as though there was no blood left in him, his grab on Harry's robes slackened. Look at me, he whispered. The green eyes found the black, but after a second, something in the depths of the dark pair seemed to vanish, leaving them fixed, blank, and empty. The hand holding Harry thudded to the floor, and Snape moved no more. As we can see here, just before dying, Snape instructs Harry to collect his tears, tears that could reveal Snape's full story, helping Harry to understand his tragedy, to understand the prince's tale. The stone pensive lay in the cabinet where it had always been. Harry heaved it onto the desk and poured Snape's memories into the wide basin with its runic markings around the edge. To escape into someone else's head would be a blessed relief. Nothing that even Snape had left him could be worse than his own thoughts. When Harry approached the pensive, he was exhausted, withered and war-torn, and ultimately, it was his willingness to escape his own reality that allowed him to fully dive into 
and absorb what he was witnessing in the memories of Snape. He fearlessly allowed himself to become immersed in Snape's world, his reality, and it was here that he began to piece together Snape's full story. It started right at the beginning, where Harry witnessed a young boy that was familiar and unfamiliar all at the same time. This boy looked like Snape, but he was happy. He had a smile on his face, and he had a companion, Harry's mother Lily. The pair were in the muggle town of Cokeworth, where they grew up together, and life was good. Tragically, this was the happiest time of Snape's entire life, the period that preceded 27 years of heartache. When it came time for the young pair to embark on their journey to Hogwarts, they took the train together, leaving Lily's sister Petunia behind. However, what was supposed to be the most exciting time of Snape's life quickly became his worst nightmare, as him and Lily were sorted into different houses, Lily to Gryffindor and Snape to Slytherin. It wasn't enough to sever the connection entirely, but it was enough to cause them to gradually drift apart, going down two very different paths. Snape hung out with the wrong crowd, some of which would later become followers of Lord Voldemort, and Lily openly expressed her concerns surrounding the kinds of people that Snape was associating himself with. In an argument one day, Snape calls Lily a filthy mudblood, an insult which he immediately and frantically retracts. However, for Lily, it was a last straw, and it ended things between them forever. Next, Harry sees a very different Snape, an older Snape, begging and pleading with none other than Albus Dumbledore on a hilltop. At that time, Snape was a full-fledged Death Eater, but here he was, pleading with the leader of the opposition. Why? As their exchange continues, Harry begins to understand what was going on. Snape had observed Trelawney predicting the fabled prophecy and relayed that information to Voldemort. Overcome with guilt, and knowing that Voldemort's knowledge of this prophecy directly put Lily's life in jeopardy, Snape had no other choice than to go to Dumbledore, the only wizard powerful enough to directly oppose Lord Voldemort and protect Lily. The next memory that Harry witnesses is after the tragedy at Godric's Hollow had already occurred, after Lily and James had been killed. He sees Snape and Dumbledore in Dumbledore's office, and Harry witnesses firsthand Snape agreeing to devote his life to Harry to protect him in Lily's honor. After reviewing Snape's memories, Harry begins to see his old potions professor in a different light. Gone was the murky, bitter Death Eater that he'd grown to hate, for in Harry's mind and heart, there was a place for redemption in Snape. This is reflected by Harry later naming one of his own children after the man that he'd hated for so many years. The Prince's Tale, the 33rd chapter of the Deathly Hallows, is one of my favorite chapters from the entire franchise, as it finally reveals Snape's true nature to Harry. Snape wasn't a dark and troubled man of his own volition, he was a man perpetually haunted by his past. He was neglected by his parents, rejected by the one girl that he ever loved, only to witness her marry his school bully, and later endured a stressful life as a double agent in an ongoing wizarding war. I know that there are plenty of fans that have an undulating perception of Snape, some finished Harry Potter with the feeling that the little bit of good in Snape was not nearly enough to offset the bad, while others felt that Snape was certainly deserving of some form of sympathy, a man that was soured by his own tragic existence. The moral ambivalence surrounding Snape's character is perhaps what makes him so enigmatic, and the divisive opinions toward his character make him one of the most interesting talking points from the franchise. I'm eager to find out, after you all had finished the books and films, what was your perception of Snape? Was he worthy of redemption? Let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, you have your mother's eyes.